Who am I? None of your business. Stop asking questions. In the grand tournament, we were introduced into Mysterious Challenger, and we may not know who this person is, but what we do know is that they made a very powerful deck. If you ask people what the best deck of the grand tournament was, a lot of people would say it was Secret Paladin. The most interesting thing about Secrets and Paladin is that individually, they're absolutely garbage, but when they're all put together, it's like having the Infinity Gauntlet. But it got me thinking, how good was Secret Paladin? In Forge and the Barons, we were introduced into a different iteration of Secret Paladin. This one was not nearly as powerful as the one in Grand Tournaments, but it definitely had some really powerful cards for this archetype. This version of the deck was basically hinged on you drawing Sword of the Fallen and cheating out secrets as early as possible while developing a lot of very powerful minions in the early game. Because of the secrets at the time, including Oh My Yog and Galloping Savior, this was a very powerful tempo deck that did extremely well in the meta that it was in. Eventually, Sword of the Fallen was nerfed and the deck did see a little bit of a hit, the sword on its own made Secret Paladin a valid archetype in Forged in the Barrens. They also introduced Cannon Master Smith, which is actually a really cool effect, but unfortunately it just did not see any play because the effect was just not good in practice. There was also a different iteration introduced in Rise of Shadows. This version of Secret Paladin was probably the weakest. The main idea of this one was just using cards that had synergy with secrets. Cards like Mysterious Blade, Sunreaver Spy, and Secret Keeper all had an ability to get Paladin on the board in the early game and try to win a game from there. This one was not nearly as consistent as the other ones because you still had to play secret. There wasn't a great method of cheating them out in the early game, even though they did have stuff like Mass Contender. Desperate Measures was also a very interesting card for this deck. Because of the twin spell keyword on this card, this was two secrets for one card, which was pretty decent, even though they were completely random. But the main legendary for Secret Paladin and Rise of Shadows, Commander Rissa, did not really see play because this was more of a win more card rather than this was just a very good card. The deck was still good. I wouldn't call it nearly as strong as the one in Forge the Barons, but it definitely was not as strong as the one in the Grand Tournament. Before we even get to the Grand Tournament, we have to look at what Paladin had in its arsenal. From Goblins versus Gnomes, they got some really good cards. Cards like Shielded Minibot, which was regarded as the best two drop at the time. Muster for Battle, which was the best three drop at the time for three mana getting that much stats in a one for weapon was very good at keeping the board. Piloted Shredder was introduced in Goblins vs. Gnomes. They had Sludge Belcher and Lotheb as their five drop. There was not really a six drop. At seven mana, there was Dr. Boom, and at eight mana, there was Tyrion Ford Ring. Paladin definitely had a lot of powerful cards in their arsenal, but there was not really a deck that was tier one. You can go for a control deck, but your control deck would not be nearly as good as something like Warrior. You could go for an aggressive deck, but it would not be as good as Hunter. Paladin was just kind of in this weird spot until the introduction of the Grand Tournament. Now, this set was definitely an interesting one. This was coming after Goblins vs. Gnomes, and Goblins vs. Gnomes was very impactful to the metagame, where the Grand Tournament did not really have the same effect. There was individually very strong cards, but overall, as an expansion, it was pretty weak. And if you ask a lot of Hearthstone players, they will remember that as probably one of the weakest expansions next to Rostakhan's Rumble. Now, the major problem with the Grand Grand Tournament is that while well, a lot of the cards were really bad, but the keyword and mechanics that they introduced in this expansion weren't super great. There was the jousting mechanic, which was kind of like a deck building challenge, but most of the time it just made your deck a lot weaker because you had to fill your deck with higher mana cards, which means your deck could get pretty expensive just for a small benefit. The inspire keyword was also not really great because using your hero power just to get a bonus effect on a pretty mediocre minion just was not going to cut it. And for both of these mechanics, there were individual cases where they did really shine, but most of the time it felt like it was just not good enough to put into your deck. But in a very weak expansion, there are still going to be cards that shine above the rest, and one of them was Mysterious Challenger. Mysterious Challenger is a six mana six six with a battle cry to put one of each secret from your deck into the battlefield. Now this card is really powerful, and I think if it was in standard right now with enough secrets, this card actually might see play. So imagine how powerful this card was in a very weak expansion. Not only did you get a 6-6 stat line, but essentially drawing secrets from your deck and putting them directly into the battlefield without spending mana was really, really good. But not only was that good, it birthed a brand new archetype that allowed Paladin to use all of these previously strong cards into a very 
good deck. This deck was so powerful because it had literally the best minion that you can play on curve throughout the game and often was just enough to win a game for Mysterious Challenger alone, but dropping cards like Dr. Boom or Tyrion Ford Ring after was insanely powerful at the time. No other deck could really deal with that much tempo. Not only did you have to deal with the new minions, you still had to play around all the secrets that were in the battlefield. And with secrets like Redemption, Noble Sacrifice, and Avenge, this was a very hard thing to play around at the time. I don't really care about the speed of the meta. The thing that upsets me is the fact that Hearthstone came to a game where the best possible play is playing the best step for step minion on curve. Hence the reason why Secret Paladin wins by playing mini bot, the best possible two drop in the game. Six, I got Mysterious Challenger, seven Dr. Boom, eight Tyrion. That's like the way to win Hearthstone. You just play step for step, the best thing on curve. And then these aggro decks all play Fell Reaver. I thought it was very interesting to throw in that clip because it kind of showcases what the grand tournament was like. It was basically just Secret Paladin and Midrange Druid playing the same game by playing the best possible minion on curve and just killing you. It wasn't super enjoyable. This is the first meta snapshot after the nerf to Grim Patron, and you could already tell that Secret Paladin was about to dominate the meta with Druid. It was the same thing for the following week. It was the same thing for the following week after that, and this deck remained tier one until the very first rotation from Blizzard with the release of Whispers of the Old God. But I wanted to see how good is Secret Paladin now? This is the very last version of Secret Paladin before the rotation happened. Leave a like if you think we're going to win. Okay, a warrior? We're fine. We got the best two drop in the game. Am I right? Getting the one drop here would be fantastic. I mean, Avenge is completely fine. We'll just take it. They full kept their hand though, so that's kind of spooky. It's Pirate Warrior. Oh, they're coining. Damn. We have the shield of Minibot. We're chilling. Oh, interesting. Oh, they got patches here too, right? Yo, that's kind of broken. <laughs> I can't do that. All right. I mean, if they're double trading, I guess it's not the worst. Ah, actually, I still don't think that's that bad. Oh, that's bad. I need muster for battle like now. I need it right now. Muster battle would be insane, actually. Okay, competitive spirit is really bad. We didn't draw the perfect curve, dude. They had everything. Yo, have some mercy, man. Not patches. Okay. <laughs> this wasn't the hand. We we definitely needed a better curve than that. I'd rather have a two drop than not, but we do want a one. I'll keep the challenger. I think it's good. Ah. Oh, you suck. It's fun. I'm about to. Oh. I guess we play two minions here. We go to Pilot Shredder. We go this into Hero Power, and then we have Challenger on six, and that's probably the game plan. Oh, they have first flame too. God dang it, man. Double piloted Shredder Pog. It's like I'm there now in the grand tournament. All the nostalgia's here. Hopefully on turn seven, we draw the big boy himself and then we just win the game. But this is really good. We didn't draw any secrets, so this is even better. Oh, what is that? That's not a card. But we have another Avenge in the deck, so it's okay. All right, we got him. He's in play, boys. We did it. What the hell is that? Are you kidding? If this is mirror identity, I'm crying. All right, right. Good job, buddy. All right. Second. Oh. Oh, God. I reg. We might get there. Let me get a victory, please. Even though this is against the worst deck in history, it's still very possible. Divine shield. Hmm. Imagine that was the divine shield. If it's Frost Nova, I'm crying. Let's go. Oh, it's Ice Block. Oh my God. I forgot Ice Block existed. God, I hate that card so much. Come on, man. Three ice blocks is illegal. I think it goes without saying, Secret Paladin isn't super great right now, but in its prime, it was a pretty good deck. Make sure to subscribe, please.